Hey, hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild, and today we actually have the preliminary patch notes for the brand new update with Rev on Tuli Coast. Now, as far as I can tell, there is no release date in these patch notes, so we still don't know a release date for Finland. However, we do have a bunch of uh, patch notes here to go over that talk about different stuff being added and some changes being made, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, we have the new content category. It says the new paid content is Rev on Tuli Coast. Explore a vast archipelago, and no, I do not care if I'm saying that properly. Let's just uh, read through it. Uh, in Revon Tuli Coast, the all-new reserve for the Hunter Call of the Wild. Read more about the newest DLC coming soon here. A new feature, Water Layout Blind. Players who purchase Revon Tuli Coast will receive a Water Layout Blind. This useful tool allows you to conceal yourself from waterfowl ducks and upland birds while in water. And now let's move on to the free content that's going to be added with this update, which the first one is the new feature, the item wheel. A new item wheel feature will be introduced alongside the release of Rev on Tuli Coast thanks to a radial menu. You'll be able to switch weapons, ammo, and sights quicker than before. We'll be diving more into the item wheel in a coming developer diary, so stay tuned, which that's going to be awesome. We've already seen that on one of the EW live streams, and it is going to be a pretty awesome feature. Uh, definitely going to be a very helpful addition to the game, especially for console players. But next up, we got the new ammunition, which is the 22 Conehead ammunition, available for any player who owns weapon pack 1, 3, or the modern rifle pack. So it is for the 22 LR. I know there was some confusion, some people thought it was for the 22 Hornet, but I was pretty sure that it was for the 22 LR, because that's what it showed that it was for when they accidentally leaked the image of the, uh, uh, the modern rifle pack 22 having the 22 cone head listed. Uh, it did show that it was 22 LR, so I kind of figured it would be, but, uh, there was a lot of confusion, some people thought it was for the 22 Hornet, but it is for the 22 LR, so we're gonna have some sort of a, I guess, polymer tip equivalent for the 22, which is going to be amazing. Now we get into the gameplay improvements, which the first one says performance. The highly requested waterfowl rework is here. We'll be sharing an in-depth look at all the changes in the coming developer diary, but this is the top level breakdown of our goals in the rework. Create variation within and between species of birds to differentiate their behaviors, which is amazing. It's good to see that they're giving them different behaviors because previously they all acted exactly the same. Uh, convert waterfowl to use home ranges and need zones similar to all other animals in the game. And so in other words, you'll find them in certain parts of the map and they're going to have uh, the same kinds of need zones as any other species in the game, which is cool. Uh, create persistent in waterfowl individuals, wait, create persistence in waterfowl individuals and groups of birds. Update flea behavior for waterfowl. Implement comprehensive gameplay feedback for waterfowl attraction. Make sure all of this works in a multiplayer environment with players hunting together. So this is something that's actually pretty cool. They've made sure that it works well in multiplayer, as a lot of you know. Uh, geese did not work good in multiplayer previously. It was very hard to get them to work properly, and they have apparently have fixed that and made it so that multiplayer uh, duck hunting and goose hunting is actually going to be a thing, which is great because it was so difficult to get it to work before. So I'm really happy to see that they've been putting some effort into trying to fix that. Full rework of the animal home ranges, populations, and schedules for specific reserves, which is Leighton, Medved, Tiabaroa, Yukon, Mexico, Cuatro Colinas, and Parquet. So it actually looks like not all of the maps are getting changes. I mean, I could have misunderstood what they were talking about, but I could have swore that every map except for Silver Ridge Peaks was getting a change. I'm wondering if maybe before when they said that, maybe they meant... Maybe they included the ones that had already got changes. So it does look like there's only seven maps getting reset this update, which is interesting. I thought it was going to be 10 of them. All right. Well, I mean, that's okay. It's honestly better because there's going to be uh, less maps where people are losing all of their zones and stuff like that. Because I know not everybody is uh, too happy with these resets that they do where they change everything. So there is going to be a few maps that don't get changed, it seems. So next we have the UX and UI changes. A long-standing community request the Marksman and Red Raptor Reflex sites have had an efficiency overhaul, which we saw a bit of that in the live stream the other day, as well as in the video that I posted. It looks amazing. Very excited for it. We've got the dog command wheel has been updated. Implemented boat icons to clarify which boats are accessible by players and which are not. And this is just the fast travel boats. It's not real boats that you can uh, drive around just so everybody knows. Um, added a new option so players can disable POI icons on the map and HUD separately. This is a huge change because before, if you disabled the POI icons, it would take them off of your map as well, which would make it so you couldn't, like, click on anything. 
Uh, borderless full screen mode is now supported, which is huge for a lot of people as well. A lot of people have requested this. Um, callouts are now clickable, which I have no idea what that would possibly mean, but you know, it's there. Uh, indication to let user know if a reserve is playable or not on the new game screen. So that's just going to be a little bit of a quality of life feature so that uh, somebody that may not own all the maps knows exactly which ones they do own. Now we get to the graphics and video effects category, which there's only one. It says overhaul of the death camera movement and player respawning. Uh, we get to the accessibility. Item wheel has been added. See the free content and dog command wheel has been updated. Uh, Apex Connect sign in option on Apex Flow. Uh, miscellaneous added the functionality to rename dogs. Harvest check improvements removed alligators sound hint, which was added to Silver Ridge Peaks before the Mississippi Acres preserve release. Uh, so that's just that alligator sound that you hear whenever walking around that certain lake on uh, Silver Ridge Peaks. So that's good to see if they're finally getting rid of that because that actually was pretty annoying. I got to say, I hated running by there and getting scared by the alligator every time. Uh, now we get on to the bug fixes, which it says fix the problem of keybind descriptions not being displayed in the settings menu. No more excessive poop trails for eastern cottontail rabbits. Animals will uh, uh, not appear static while drinking near shore, so they'll be lifting their heads again. Ranger skill not working with traditional bows. Uh, fix the issue of accept decline button appearing in Polish language even when the game is launched in English. Uh, I didn't even know that was a bug, to be honest. That's interesting. Reset skills and reset perks buttons will now remove the effects of skills and perks in the current game session. So before you had to restart your game to get the new perks and skills to take effect. Uh, so it does look like it's going to take effect immediately now whenever you change up your skills. 3D UI icons have been fixed. Wait, 3D UI icons Twitch have been fixed. I'm not 100% sure what that means. I'm assuming there was some icons that were twitching around a little bit that they've fixed. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which ones that would be though. Fix the issue where POI icons did not appear on map for some hunting structures after being bought or built. I have noticed that one, especially in multiplayer. That does seem to happen. Uh, fix the issue when approaching first outpost in a new game. Question mark icon did not disappear from the outpost. And that is the end of the patch notes. And though this may not be the largest update when it comes to fixes, there's definitely some good fixes in there that have been long awaited fixes. Um, along with a lot of really good changes uh, for just quality of life in general. It's really good to see them taking more effort and putting it into the... Uh, not only the bug fixing, but also just the quality of life gameplay improvements. It's nice to see more of that along with these uh, crazy updates like the waterfowl rework. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you're most excited for. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Peace!